Thank you. Recording in progress, everything is perfect. Okay, so as we have seen, one of our enemies where we have, can observe dimension drop, namely that our dimension is strictly smaller than what we want to see is the affinity dimension, are these alignment structures. So let's try to exclude these alignment structures from our life. Okay, so the definition says that we say that a finite collection of matrices, and these matrices will be exactly the matrices uh, for IFS, is reducible, is irreducible, if there is a no proper subset of Rd, so I exclude the Rd, it's a proper subspace, sorry, not subset, subspace of Rd, so I exclude the origin at uh, the zero and I exclude Rd, such that it's preserved, proper subspace V, such that it's preserved by all the matrices. Unfortunately, this condition is still not enough. What we need is that strong irreducibility, so we say that it's strongly irreducible, if there is no finite collection of proper subspaces of Rd, let's say V1 up to Vm, such that this finite collection is preserved by all the matrices. But pretty much the strong irreducibility, so the irreducibility is not enough. Because imagine that you have a diagonal and an anti-diagonal matrix. Then it's irreducible because there is no subspace which is preserved. However, the two main axes will be preserved and this will cause exactly the same type of problems. So we need a strong irreducibility which says that no finite subset you can see and this is equivalent with saying that every orbit, so for every proper subspace V, the orbit of this subspace and what do I mean by orbit? By orbit, I mean that you take all possible products of the matrices, check where the subspace is mapped to, is infinite. Okay, no one is preserved on Earth. Okay, so one might say that, okay, that must be enough then. Let's hope that if we have the separation condition, if we have the open set condition from borrowed from or self-similar systems, then it's enough. So what, let me recall what this uh, open set condition means. It means that there exists a U open and bounded subset of Rd such that all the maps, all the maps of my IFS is mapping U into itself and also the images of this U open set are disjoint for every two different maps I and That's Sadly, again, not enough. Imagine 
two matrices, A1, imaging the, the following IFS, A1x and A2x. These matrices has strictly positive uh, entries in such a way that they map the unit square, let's say the first one, this is the F1, maps the unit square here, and F2 maps the unit square here. This wants to be parallel. You see that the attractor is only one point, however, the affinity dimension must be positive. So again, the open set condition is not enough. But what is enough is the strong open set condition. So if we say that the strong open set condition holds, which implies a third assumption that the X, my self of five sets, intersection with this U is non empty, then it's enough, at least on the plane, and, and a little bit further. Okay, so it was a theorem of myself, Hochmann, and Rappaport, and we showed it the following. If we have an IFS of affinities, so if our finite collection of affine maps, contractive affine maps, such that the matrix parts, the linear parts, are strongly irreducible and it satisfies the strong open set condition. Let me denote the open, strong open set condition by SOSC. Then it's true then the Hausdorff dimension of your attractor equals its box counting dimension equals to S naught. Furthermore, for any uh, new self-affine measure with the corresponding bare only new, so I mean with probabilities pi. The lower Hausdorff dimension equals to the upper packing dimension, which equals to the Yakunov dimension. Actually, in the statement, there is a little cheating because uh, it's, it did not exclude the case when we have similarity. So if we are in the similar, a self-similar situation, then still we can be strongly irreducible, right? This means that one of our orthogonal matrix, uh, sorry, it should be, I should have emphasized that all these maps are planar. Okay, so this theorem is valid on the plane. So basically you have an irrational rotation, but this you can get from other results. So basically, without loss of generality, we can assume that we have real affine mappings by assuming that we may assume that these maps are proximal. So this finite collection of matrices is proximal. Which means that you can find a finite word i1, i n minus 1, such that the matrix AI has uh, eigenvalues. Different in 
modulus. Okay, so you have two different eigenvalues, different in absolute value. Okay, otherwise, if it's not the case, then basically what you are, you are self-similar. And then this holds even milder con conditions. Sorry, Balaji. When you look at the action, not the action of the matrices, but their projected action. So, for example, in the theorem on the circle, that there is also the concept of proximal some relation. Um, yes, it means that. Uh, wait. Trying to pair of points, there is some iteration, some yeah. subsequent. Of yes, yes, there is, there is. But at the moment, I cannot tell you exactly what it is. Yes, but yeah, basically this means that at, uh, so the strong irreducibility and this proximality definition over there together implies that you are almost surely contracting on the, the projective circle. But you are, it's not necessarily means that you are hyperbolic on the projective circle. So it not necessarily means that you are dominating. So Rene means for every. Here. Yeah. No, there exists. Only, only one is enough. If you find such kind of... Yes. Yeah. Only one such kind of matrix products is far enough. This already implies that you have at least one cylinder who is long and thin, and basically this spreads out everywhere. So you are already in a, a, a fine situation. Does there exist a self measure that you know? So the local dimension, self-affine measure, no. Uh, basically, unless you are, so if you're not a singleton, then uh, self-affine measures has the Frostman property, that they have positive dimension. But it, this wasn't the question. No, whether the dimension is S0. S0, yes, okay, yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah, sorry, no, I, I misunderstood. Um, the answer is, I think, the result of check that self of fine measures and, and the anti K maki that, oh, for example, on the plane, the self of fine measures in general cannot attend this S naught under these conditions. In order to have a self of fine measures who attains this S naught, either you must be self similar or you must be reducible. Or, uh, or so uh, strongly uh, irreducible is enough. If you have diagonal anti-diagonal, good question. Okay, but in case, okay, to be honest, okay. So just in case, if you are reducible, so basically you have triangular matrices, or you are self-similar, then there are otherwise the result of Chagri that no self-similar measure can attain this value. But basically, you can ap approximate this S0 value via n step Bernoulli measures. So, if you go to the nth iterates, you can approximate it arbitrarily well, but not, uh, cannot attain it. Okay? So, this is the result which is hopefully, well, we won't prove it is as it is but some kind of path, how to do is some kind of sketch for the next time. So before that, let me tell some further developments. So there's a theorem by Hochmann and Rappaport, who uh, introduced also the exponential separation for planar systems. So if you recall from yesterday, Hochmann proved that if you are, uh, if you have a self-similar system on the line and it satisfies an exponential separation condition, the, the dimension does not drop with respect to the similarity dimension. This can be also done here, just the question is what do you mean by <coughs> exponential separation? It turns out that there is a metric. So there is a metric. So not, not the theorem, it's a part of the statement. So there is a metric D on the affine transformations 
invertible affine maps, which is left invariant, which means that if you look at this composition of affine mappings, then their distance is exactly the same without G. And we say that the IFS is exponentially separated. But this IFS FI, I in lambda, is exponentially separated. If the iterates are exponentially separated with respect to this left invariant metric, namely, there exists an epsilon greater than zero, such that for ever, such that there exist infinitely many ends that the distance of the iterates of fi fj is greater than epsilon to the power n for every finite words i and j who are not the same but both have length n. Why you need this metric? Basically, for if you recall from yesterday the self-similar situation, then there we could be very generous, saying that if the linear parts of two maps are not the same, then they don't care. Their distance is infinite. Otherwise, if the linear parts are the same, then we care about the, what's the distance of the endpoints. Here, if you iterate such kind of general matrices, the linear parts will basically never be the same. Right? So this is why you need it to do, if you wanted to do the equivalent thing, for the self-affine business, you need this kind of left invariant for that. Uh, what is G here? Oh, yeah. All, all of them are here in vertical affine maps. So for all? Yes. For all, for all, all, all triple. Okay, so if you have this exponential separation plus you are Strongly invariant, uh, strongly irreducible, plus you are proximal, then you have the same result like this for the Hausdorff dimension of the self affine set and the Hausdorff and the dimension of the self affine measure. The very recent result of Rappaport is that he managed to extend to three dimensions. So Rappaport showed that if uh, we have a finite collection, so we have an IFS of fi maps, Invertible affine maps on R3, which satisfies the strong open set condition and which satisfies the strong irreducibility and uh, which is proximal, then again. You know that the Hausdorff dimension of the self affine set, and you know the Hausdorff dimension of the self affine measure. By this, with induction, you can pretty much see that no one will ever prove the four dimensional case. Okay, so uh, this is the, basically the best thing what we know at the moment in this situation. So, what are the advantages of these guys? of these theorems, that basically you can provide examples. Because in the original Falcon and Solomia, in Jordan polycott shimon argument, well, you know that typically what happens. But you cannot show translation vectors. Here, these are conditions which you can check on your hand, and you can just check it whether they hold. 
Okay. Um, are there any questions so far? Yes. Could you give an idea about this metric and what this condition means? Uh, I don't want to go into that. <laughs> So actually, uh, you can construct this. Uh, this uh, um, yeah, you can construct this metric by hand for R two. So it's not 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 so difficult. It's, I think even we have this in our paper. But we really, we really don't need it. I, I want to consider from now on a much much simpler situation. <laughs> in the counter example for why you need strong open set condition, hmm? is any any so, any system that would fail under the OSC, would it contain a subsystem like this, or can it fail in a different way? Uh, you mean in R3? No, in R2. No. The, so, the, the, OS, the picture you drew down there, whether the, where the attraction was a singleton? Mm -hmm. Oh, oh for, for this one. So, the exponential is separated. Oh, right. No, no, no. Um, in the, on the board, sorry, you just dropped the alpha. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, oh, okay, 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 yes. So any system that's, that doesn't satisfy the strong open set condition and fails, um, and like doesn't satisfy the formula, will it contain a subsystem like this? That's a very good question. I don't know. I don't know. So, that's a good question. What are the, the possible conditions for the, the, the failure? I mean, I would guess rather than not necessarily this one, but some kind of alignment. Because if you think about this, you can also think about this example as an alignment. Right? If you would just extend it to the three-dimensional case and introduce some extra tiny contacting ratios, then your system will be aligned. So somehow I would guess that it must be somehow implied that you have some alignment structure. If your dimension is slightly smaller, but, but I, I don't know. Uh, I have a question. So, in your theorem on the top there, mm -hmm. uh, with Hoffman and Robert Hart, uh, so you have two uh, equalities uh, one for the center, another for the measure. Yeah. And uh, how technical is it that they are together that you both have? Ah, that's, that's also a very, very good question. So, yes, one could guess that uh, you have dimension drop here. Of course, then there are some measures where you have dimension drop here. But that's a very good question, that whether the opposite direction holds. So if you know that there is a measure, and maybe very, very small dimension, the dimension drops, is it true that the dimension of the, the attractor must also drop? Of course, in the examples, what we know, we are working with this, either this alignment stuff or uh, with exact overlaps. In that case, is yes. But in general, I mean, so it's, it might be a good conjecture that it drops if and only if this drops. But I'm not aware of any example. Okay. Good. Uh, so, let, so our task is in the upcoming, yes, maybe 20 minutes and during the next talk is try to give some outline for, for that proof. And we will consider a much simpler situation, namely uh, we will assume strong separation, just to avoid uh, several technical problems. Okay, the strong separation immediately means that for any two different mappings, fi of x intersected with fj of x is empty set. Okay. And basically, there are two important tools in the proof. The one is the letter PA Young formula, and the other important tool is Hochmann's entropy growth theory.
These are the two essential ingredients. And what we want is now to understand what's the letter P A M formula in our situation. And to do that, now I will reveal why we have two-sided shift. And the reason is, if you use two-sided shifts, then you can understand by Oselegas theorem much better the different, different directions of contractions. So, let me find it. Yes. So the theorem of Oselegas. It says the following. Okay, so let mu b be, of course, this will be more, the Oselius theorem is much more general. I will state here only the version which we require for uh, further, further proofs. Okay, so let mu b the Bernoulli measure on the two sided shift. with this probability vector. And so the Bernoulli measure simply means that if you are looking at finite word from R to M, these are the probabilities, product of probabilities in the correct word. Then there exist measurable maps <coughs> such that measurable maps E and F from this symbolic space to the projective circle such that the following holds this F depends only on the negative coordinates and it's also invariant. So whenever you see for almost every i, f of i equals to a i naught f of sigma i, where this sigma is the left shift operator on my two-sided shift. Furthermore, if you are looking at How your matrix product a i naught up to a i n minus one is acting on f sigma n i? You're interested in what's the growth rate on this f i n symbolic space? So i has these coordinates. These are the positive first positive coordinates of this i. If you are checking this. The limit as m goes to infinity, this exactly corresponds to the second Yapunov exponent. Meanwhile, if you are looking at the E, this depends only on the positive coordinates. And it's also invariant. Whatever I write here, this one, that one, oh, everything is almost sure. Okay? Is a i naught of e sigma i. Furthermore, the growth, the shrinking rate of the matrix product along this. Space corresponds to the largest, sorry, smallest Yapunov yeah, exponent. So in this case, basically, I didn't mention, but I should have to. So, so these holds almost surely. Furthermore, in this case, we know that. The first and second Yapunov exponent are different. This is thanks due to our two conditions, the strong irreducibility and uh, proximality. Where is the proximality? Uh, yes, here. 
Okay, if we assume this, then the two Yapunov of exponents are different. And there is one important stuff here that, of course, since the behavior on to two different subspaces is different, then we have that they together gives you back the plane. And, well, they can be close to each other, but not too fast. So namely, if you are checking that what's the limit of the sign of the angle between this E and F subspaces along the dynamics, they can converge to each other only sub-exponentially if they converge. <clears throat> Okay. So this says that, basically, if we want to understand our self-affine measure, then we somehow must understand how this self-affine measure behaves along these directions and hope the best that we can deduce better information from these subspaces. So the limit is not equal to zero? It's equal to zero. Equal to this, zero. this means that you, are, you, are, you can shrink, but only sub-exponential speed. Okay. Okay. So, uh, So the iterated function system is essentially still was living on a one diamond, on, on a, just a positive side, right? On the system. So now we make a dynamical system which really uses both sides here. Okay? So uh, since we have the strong separation condition, then we can say the following. So we can define a natural projection from my two-sided symbolic space to my attractor in such a way that if you have this infinite sequence i, then you take only the positive coordinates, this f i naught to f i n minus 1, zero. This is a very nice Hölder continuous map defined everywhere. And since we know that the strong separation holds, we can define a dynamics from the projective circle times x into itself as follows, that if you have a subspace and if you have a point x, then you check where this point is, you blow it up, namely you apply fi inverse on this point x, and you apply on your subspace the inverse matrix. If i, if x belongs to f i of x. Okay, this is your dynamics. And now using the natural projection and the f oscillates direction, we can just conjugate it to the two-sided shift. So if I define a measurable function from sigma to rp1 times x as follows, that it should be p of i should be f of i and pi of i. So observe that this coordinate depends only on the negative part, and this coordinate depends only on the positive part. And also observe that by using this g map, g of pi equals to pi of sigma. For almost everything.
And why is it an advantage? It's an advantage that this coordinate that is independent of that coordinate, right? Because we have the band of the measure. So we can define a measure called mu f, which is the push forward of my Bernoulli measure via this F mapping. And this is what we call the first number measure. Let me tell you in a minute why it's called the first number measure. And we can also push forward the same Bernoulli measure by using the natural projection lowercase pi, right? And then, and this is my self fi measure. But the good part of this here is that if you take the product of my first number measure and my self fi measure, it is G invariant and ergodic. Furthermore, the theorem by myself and Antti Kalmaki, and we showed the following. So if this strong separate, again, we showed something much stronger, just, this is just a statement, which is or for our special case. So if the strong separation condition holds, plus the strong irreducibility, plus the proximality, then the Hausdorff dimension of your self-affine measure equals to the entropy, this is a quantity we know, over the largest Japonov exponent, this is a quantity that we know, plus 1 minus the ratio of the two Japonov exponents times the Hausdorff dimension of the projection along direction V, I will explain this in a moment, of the measure nu for Furstenberg almost every direction V. Okay, let me explain again what things are meaning here. This is I have not defined. This is the orthogonal projection along, so not onto, but along the direction V. What, and furthermore, nu is exact dimension. <laughs> That's why I wrote there dime Hausdorff dimension, but I actually could replace it with any reasonable dimension of measure. So it means that this quantity also depends on the first Sternberg measure. This quantity here is almost surely constant. And basically, you understand this part, this part. In order to show and figure out what's the dimension of my self of fine measure, the only thing what you need to do is to figure out what's the dimension of its projection. <clears throat> and this is, the, this is the case where we want to reduce the problem. Instead of understanding what's going on the plane, we want to understand what's going on the line, because we like the line much better, so hopefully it's easier. Not too much, but yes. Okay, so... Uh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, I'm a bit confused about the measures, so you have like four of them, new, new phi, new, and new phi times Okay, uh, new is, sorry, new is not new, basically he is the semi self of phi measure. New is also not very new because he is my left shift invariant measure. What is new is indeed the first number measure I would like to tell a few words about. And what is indeed new is the orthogonal projection of my self affine measure along a first number typical direction. 
Because what are the first and very typical directions? Even from the definitions you can definition you can see is that this guy is the push forward via F. Who is F? F is the measurable collection of directions where the contraction is the strongest. Who is corresponding to chi 2? Actually, it was shown by Furstenberg that under these assumptions that we have strong irreducibility and uh, what else? Um, and proximality, then there exists one uni. So the first number measure mu f is the unique measure who is the stationary measure with respect to these matrices, namely if you apply this equation. So he is the only one who is stationary with respect to this process. That you toss a coin with probability pi, it's the matrix ai inverse, and your direction, you apply this ai inverse. Okay, so this is the three stationary measure of this process. And this process finds all the directions who are uh, strongly contracting. And the main part is that although these assumptions are mild, this measure is unique and really tells you the behavior. And independent of the positive side, independent of what's going on on my self affine set. Uh, because first number was interested in when you can say that uh, the Yakunov exponents are different, your system on the projective plane has positive Yakunov exponent, and it's related for that, but it's a very useful ta uh, task for us. Uh, and let me make one further comment before I finish it. So this is the, let me say, the most basic version of the Lenape Young formula. This is the easiest uh, assumptions with the easiest statement. The Lenapian formula has been extended for d-dimensional situation, for generic ergodic measures, by uh, Dejun Feng uh, a few years ago. But there, you don't really have this formula. Because if you have a generic ergodic measure, you are passed. So the positive, negative side might depend on your future, the positive side. So here you need to introduce kind of you know, conditional measures. However, if you are quasi Bernoulli, at least, not necessarily Bernoulli because it's full independence, but if you are quasi Bernoulli, so you are somewhat independent, your future and the past is somewhat independent, then you can stay the same formula. Okay, so we will try to prove next time that one and a little bit further going to in the details how to handle this nasty guy here. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you again for Thank you.